We've come up to meet Jim at his allotment. Now, a few of our other cooking videos, we do reference ingredients or herbs that we have taken from Jim's allotment. A lot of people have, have expressed an interest on what goes on in the allotment, what do we grow. Um, hopefully, I'll get Jim, if he doesn't fall over the back of that hedge there, <laughs> I came to give us a walk around. James has already started picking some. What have you got in your cup? Blackberries. 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 We shall have blackberry crumble later. I'm going to get Jim to give us a quick walk around about the things that we have in here. Straight away you're walking to this like this, your... This. At the moment this is like our little herb bed. Most of the allotment is sort of under construction. Not been too well the last couple of years and it's all getting out of hand so I'm just... It's a constantly evolving thing yeah, as well it is. isn't it with it? Yeah. So but here we've got um, lemon balm which we use in baking and has a very lovely citrusy, lemon citrusy uh, aroma to it. I do love the smell of these sweet peas as well. And, well the sweet peas are a, a, a joy. Uh, next to that there's rosemary and some mint and marjoram which I leave to go to plant. So lemon balm, rosemary, mint, mint marjoram, marjoram and you oh they're going we've disturbed them but I don't cut this back I leave the flowers for the bees and you've got some oh, yeah. lavender at the back there uh, lavender yeah I did have a lavender hedge around this bed but it had got it was rather old and gotten rather woody so I'm just leaving that with the original piece and I'm going to take some cuttings and re-establish it um, parsley which I've just given a bit of a cut back a few days ago so that will re-establish itself. He's growing a second set of tomatoes in here these are the off-cut shoots from the other tomatoes that we'll show you in a moment and um, we're talking about seeding different crops at different times just so you can continue to harvest over a, over a longer period. Here we've got borage which has borage a with a B not with a P Borage, B-O-R-A-G-E. This, the flowers are edible in salads. Quite a pretty little flower. And the stalks and leaves I would put in a pan whilst cooking new potatoes, and it gives it a lovely, lovely flavour. Uh, there's thyme. Again, that was a much bigger, well, almost like a half hedge, but it had gone woody. So I just re-established it from some cuttings and I've just given that a bit of a prune the same with the sage I've just pruned that we have got a big buddleia there at the back that's that's not so much for for anything edible is it for the butterflies but, love it butterflies love it and we get a tremendous number of butterflies but also it protects the greenhouse from the worst of the easterly gales that's not John by the way that's a ship no, the other a, side it's of a the fog edge. on I'll show you we have got the dockyard down there. You've got um, flowers. You've got another hedge of sweet peas there, haven't you? And one uh, at the back of these. Sweet peas, which we just grow for the beauty of the flowers. I mean, the perfume is incredible, and it's the more you cut them, the more they give you. I will. Um, uh, you can't tell the smell through the video, but uh, sweet peas are absolutely stunning. Up there with like the honeysuckle, they are a delicious smelling. And We've had in this bed uh, peas. And That's what I mean about it, it constantly evolving, isn't yes. it? Because at so certain times of year you'll do. What we're looking to plant now is sort of winter cabbages, more onions, potatoes. Uh, in here we've got runner beans, and they are just grown in companion with another wall of sweet peas. Delicious. You wouldn't believe it being in the UK, but we are struggling for water at the minute. Everything does need a really good soak. Yeah, I mean, the ground at the minute, you can see it's just just very dusty. And I've no running water here, I just collect off the greenhouse roof and the shed. So I only water the greenhouse where possible. You wouldn't tell by today, but we've had some incredibly hot weather. Do you put the marigolds in there for any reason? Yeah, yes, they're a companion plant for the tomatoes. They keep a particular bug away from the yeah. tomatoes. And 
like a symbiotic yeah. relationship. Yeah, one, just one a few marigolds that. will save your whole tomato crop. And this we, looks like a very special bench, James. Where did that come from? We made it. We did, didn't we? That was a present. We've got a number of varieties. These little, but pear-shaped, yellow tomatoes are just delicious. If I find a label for them, if I can read golden something, uh, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> come, the rest has been rubbed off. Yeah. Golden delight, I would imagine. And you've got, are these chilies, are they? Uh, or the peppers? Yeah, those the, are chilies. These, these, and the are, ones at yes. the back there almost look like jalapenos. Yes, they are. Uh, this one here is a another little chili. I can see you growing some down here. I always think they look like witch's fingers. Yes, they. But we'll be in in a moment and pick these tomatoes because they are just. I do love the smell of, uh, of tomatoes in. I just need to come in house. and have a little fin. Uh, the tops grow so vigorously. So I'd just like to keep. Where's your brambles? Not to show you the raspberries. Sort of deforesting. Okay. And over here, what we've got? Raspberries. A raspberry patch. Oh, easy. Oh. Yeah, if they. If they're hard to come off, they're not quite ready. Look, if you just get hold of them if they... and they don't come off. That one there should, should twit there, look, see? It just lifts off. There you go. If they're too hard to come off, they're not ready. So this bed we're going to open up. This raspberry patch started with just three raspberry plants, and over two years it has developed into this. And you've got your gooseberries, and some strawberries are on the back of there. And uh, yesterday I was just working my way through the strawberries and collecting runners where we will establish well so they've they've run off as a side they run off so what i'll do now is plant those plant those up and we do have an influx at the moment of blackberries and brambles these were potatoes and we come with james when was it a week ago yes a couple of weeks ago harvested uh, I don't know, about 20 or 30 pounds of potatoes just from this side of the bed. Oh, James, they look fantastic. On this side was white and red onions, and we squeezed some beetroot and radish from the top. This, this is horseradish. That's horseradish, ready for our next. Caterpillars have had their, ta have had their way with it, haven't they? Yeah, I'm not bothered about that. And then some tree. rhubarb, and then, I don't know, is this going to be a pear? It's a pear tree. And then you've got your apples there. And that's my little apple tree gave a serious prune last year so you can see it's sending off lots yeah. of vertical runners mm -hmm. and some little that, carrots that was my broad oh, bean no that stuff. one's that one's had the top taken off on it look big over vigorous hoeing i expect i think it's been a what do you think's had that james a snail or a slug here we've got rhubarb a real favorite of mine but these are new plants i put in this year so I'm not going to harvest the stalks I'm just going to leave the plant to establish you just leave it for a year to yes to and then you... next year it will crop vigorously we could eat these stalks but if we pick them it would produce a much weaker plant and subsequent harvests would be much reduced it's interesting that because I've, I've heard before that um, it's different with some with some plants or some veggies and grapes for instance they give a better crop if they have to struggle if they have a hard yeah, life whereas yeah. other ones yep. yeah some lots of things are better left peas for example D don't water peas they go much better if they are stressed mm. and of course we have an olive tree yep. it does vary but i yet have an olive off it In a, one of our local supermarkets was having a sale and we've got the four fruit trees for with change from ten pounds so they've all established themselves and considering that we've had such a hot summer they're looking pretty good we've we've talked about this before and it's about like the grafting of a good rooting tree 
onto a good fruiting tree. There's a graft. The um, the tree in my the tree in my childhood garden growing up grew two types of apples because one side it was a one type of good fruiting tree grafted onto one that had a strong root. Okay. And I've just noticed we mentioned this in another video. That is the Crocosmia montbretia. That's the copper tips. We were mentioning that um, my mum had it in her garden all the time growing up, and we think it was because. My mum and my gran, when my mum was a youngster, come down to Cornwall on holiday and they yeah. took some of it back. That's but you get two, ty uh, two types around there that I've seen. One of them's the Lucifer, which is the red yes, one. that's right. This, this is just when I sat in my shed having a cup of tea. The view down here is, is staggering. And I've just cut it all back, but you can see the remnants of Valerian, which is another much sought after garden plant, which grows like weeds. I the, um, leave this bit as wild as possible because we have hedgehogs uh, and other mammals that live in the wall. We are just going to mention there it was um, he does it things in certain ways at certain times of year like he hasn't cut the hedge back because the birds were nesting in it and now that they're not then you can cut it back or like they're leaving the marjoram in flower so that the bees have got a late harvest to feed on. It's um, I love it, um, especially the garden. Like you say, it's not; it doesn't flower once and it doesn't crop once by seeding things at different times. You can harvest all year round. Yeah, I must say, we're, it is like a little wildlife oasis. The number of butterflies we see in here is incredible. And I saw a ladybird the other day, and I haven't seen one of those for several years. The, the, the quantity of there was there was a problem with the ladybirds. I think it was last year or the year before where there was a. Like an invasive variety that brought a, brought a disease with them yes. and it wiped out an awful lot of the local ladybirds. Oh look, we've got an escapee. <laughs> this this Budlia is getting to be a right thicket down at the bottom there. Yes, it's, I've just given it a haircut and I'll, if you think at the beginning of this year it was no more than yeah, they two, do. two feet they high. They grow incredibly well don't and they? Look at it now, it's, but it, because the, we are open to easterly gales it provides the greenhouse with protection from extreme weather from the east. Uh, north is over there, so we get those trees which break up uh, the north winds. Uh, very little from, oh, that's my compost heap. Uh, compost heap, that's what we collect in the. Yeah. So, from the other cooking videos that you've seen when we were composting things like the potato peels, that's what it goes into. And I up in the corner there, I'm going to start a leaf mould corner. Uh, just, I'll leave that for a year or so, and that will provide some essential nutrients. Thank you very much. Uh, de delighted.